So Psalms 19 is a psalm of David uh, that he wrote to the chief musician. And so this is a another opportunity for us to see into kind of there's a great glimpse into David's thinking that we get from these psalms. And in this one, he is praising God and probably having a high time. Now, the last chapter he had a pretty high time. So maybe this one came shortly after that one. Maybe. Or it's another major time in his life that he is thanking God for all that God has done for him. So let's jump in. Verse 1. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth, uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. So this is talking about how the heavens, the firmament, testifies of the glories of God. Uh, in, in a way, day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. So even the day and night, there's wisdom in what God has done to help us. Uh, so this is more of a like astronomical type ideas, the movement of the heaven and the earth and everything else. Um, but even though there's speech and knowledge, there's not a voice heard. It's just the laws of God running and doing things. Uh, and that uh, that's kind of what's happening here. There's a tabernacle of the sun. The sun rises and comes forward at, like the bridegroom leaving the chamber to go for the wedding and to, to do things. Just like a strong man getting ready to run the race. He's excited. He comes out of his tent. He emerges. He's ready to go like the beginning of a day. So verse 6, his going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. There is nothing hid from the heat thereof. So just as the sun comes up, it affects everything. And of course, this is coming from a desert, so it gets hot. It's really hot. There's no way to escape the heat without having artificial means like an air conditioner. So if you think about it, if you lived in the desert and you just had no way to do it, you, everything's going to get hot. Even a building is going to get hot. That greenhouse effect. So there's... It affects everything and everyone. There's no way to escape it, basically. Uh, let's see. Verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making the wise simple. So the laws of God are perfect, basically. They're, they, they help the soul move forward. The point of the laws of God is to help your spirit be better prepared for the next life. That's what he's, he's getting at there. And that the testimony of God is more profound than wise. So this is an important point too when you talk about faith because uh, we can't intellectualize ourselves into heaven. That's not how it works. If it was, then gospel study would be the number one thing we should do. But it's not. It's faith. Again, a couple of chapters ago we talked about this about faith, realizing that uh, if God wanted us to know the truth, he would have kept, left Joseph and Brigham and them with the gold plates so that they could be put on display at the church headquarters, Salt Lake City, for the LDS Church to prove the Book of Mormon true. But that's not what it's about. It's about faith. You can't intellectualize yourself into heaven. You have to have faith on God. That's what they're talking about in here, basically that the testimony of God is more, makes the wise, the wisdom of the wise, look like nothing. Just simple, rudimentary stuff. So that testimony, which is you understanding for your, from your perspective in life, that God is real. That is what a testimony is. From my map of reality, from my perspective of the world, I know he is real. That's a testimony. Uh, verse 8, The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. So when you follow the commandments, it blesses your life. It helps you to have a better life. Uh, when you are also the commandment of the Lord, it's because it's so good. They actually enlighten you. They help you to progress and improve. Verse 9, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. So a lot of really good statements that he is making in here of, of understanding that how perfect and amazing the plan of God is, 
and it, how it enriches and blesses our lives if we follow it. Verse 10, more to be desired are they, meaning the, uh, the commandments, the judgments of God, than gold. You should value God's uh, words and his judgments and understandings more than gold. Yea, than much fine gold, sweeter than also honey and the honeycomb. Now, this is really interesting how he's talking about this, because why would honey and honeycomb be a desired thing? Because it's physical. It physically helps our body. It does give us calories and nutrients, but it helps satisfy an appetite for our body. Gold satisfies that appetite for worldly things, whereas we should prioritize God above worldly things and realize that the spirit is more important than the body. What happens in the next life is more important than what happens in this life. That's the perspective that he wants us to have with this verse. Verse 10, oh sorry, that was verse 10. Verse 11, moreover by them is thy servant warned and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. So what he's getting at in here is being purified. Help me get rid of the, the wickedness inside of me. Help me improve myself to get rid of the mistakes and errors and things. This is repentance. This is atonement. Uh, verse 13, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Now, Joseph Smith changes the word sins to acts. So keep me back from presumptuous acts. Let them not have dominion over me. Let, then shall I be upright. I shall be innocent from great from the great transgression. So help me to not fall into temptations. Help me not give in to bad habits. Verse 14, let the words of my mouth and the mediation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So again, if you remember a lot of hymns, use psalms for their lyrics. And so that you, if you started hearing a hymn run through your mind after we read that, that's you're, you're on that right track of understanding, oh, these are the hymns that rely on psalms for wording and for understanding. So some really good ideas there. So let's jump over to the next psalm to learn more.